right. In these next slides, uh, we will provide a general overview about the many different types of ADUs and JDUs that can be created, as well as an overview about general costs based on the type of ADU or JADU that might be under consideration. This is simply an overview that we want to help you become more familiar with around some of the common language utilized to describe different types of ADUs, as well as some key considerations that may influence the overall feasibility of your potential project. Okay, so ways to build an ADU. There are different ways to build them. Uh, the traditional process is by hiring an architect to design the plans, and then a general contractor to build the new unit on site. And there are also a number of companies that are offering prefabricated or modular units where most of the construction of the unit is happening offsite in a warehouse and then delivered and assembled at the home once ready. And there are pros and cons to each approach. The most common consideration for determining which strategy is best depends on your property's site conditions, whether there is enough access to deliver, to deliver a prefab or modular unit, and whether the prefab or modular unit can fit within the site constraints that may exist on your property. Many homeowners may seek to choose a prefab or modular unit to reduce costs. However, if you don't have the necessary access to deliver the prefab unit, um, to, the, to your site, or if your site conditions are less than favorable and require um, additional costs to support access issues um, or other site constraints, uh, you will need to be aware that the cost can escalate rather quickly, almost to the fact that prefab units can sometimes be equal, if not more expensive than a custom built strategy. So it's really important when you're thinking about the different strategies to really understand how your site conditions may influence either strategy that you select. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Rachel. So uh, ADUs come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, we are gonna start um, with detached and attached units. To create a unit, it must have its own entrance, kitchen, bathroom, and heating system. The most popular and well-known ADU is the quintessential cottage home that sits independently on a property. There must be adequate room, but when an attached unit can be accommodated, it, it makes for a wonderful feeling of space and privacy. ADUs can also be attached either to the main residence or placed above a garage. In this case, sound attenuation can be more challenging, but privacy can still be accomplished, possibly even including a space for a private yard. Converting a garage is another popular project we are seeing a lot of these days. In some cases, depending on where you live, parking um, may not need to be replaced on the property. When converting a garage that is detached, as pictured here, it must be an ADU that includes a full kitchen. Next slide, please. When converting a garage that is attached to the main house, however, it can either be an ADU or a junior accessory dwelling unit or a junior unit as I like to call them. Junior units are different than ADUs in, the, in that they must be less than 500 square feet may only have an efficiency kitchen with a sink, refrigerator, and small plug-in appliances like a toaster oven, hot plate, or microwave. They can share the central heating system and often remain connected to the main residence through an interior door or a set of interior doors. Um, like you see in uh, adjoining hotel suites. Um, this provides for a more flexible living arrangement when housing family me members, friends, or a caregiver. Sound attenuation can sometimes be trickier with conversion units, and all conversion units can either be an ADU with a full kitchen or a junior unit. Interior conversion units can be created within the main residence by repurposing finished living space or unfinished space, where you can still see wood framing, such as wall studs, roof, and floorboards. During our feasibility site visit, we help clients review these spaces and make sure that they are suitable for ADU development. 
You are allowed to build one ADU and one junior unit on any single family residentially zoned parcel throughout California. But it's important to note that junior units require the homeowner to live on the property, meaning the owner may reside in either the main house, the ADU, or the junior unit. Next slide, please. So what are the average costs to build an attached and a detached unit? Please note that these numbers quoted are for a 100 square foot unit. To help you picture it, we're talking about a unit that is about one quarter bigger than a typical two car garage. The size of this unit is adequate for a large studio uh, with a kitchen and bath or a small one bedroom. The prices quoted here are of course only a rough estimate covering a rough estimate covering design permitting and construction and can vary considerably based on site conditions, utility hookups and other complexities in the design. I've been in construction for over 20 years and can tell you that if a homeowner hasn't done a project within the last 5 years, they will always find the price of building surprising. And COVID didn't help. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the rising cost of housing as more people are moving out of concentrated areas because they can now work remotely. And who wouldn't wanna live in Santa Cruz? I continue to be impressed by the community, the natural beauty and the geologic diversity of the area. And the good and the bad news is that people wanna live here because it's wonderful. So turning back to development costs, detached ADUs tend to be less expensive than attached units of the same size because they do not have to deal with any of the existing structure where you must tie into walls, roof, and foundation. You can see that the price goes up by about $25,000 to account for the greater complexity of these projects. Adding an ADU over any structure also adds costs as the weight of the additional load must be, support, must be supported, structurally supported. Putting an ADU over an existing garage has become a popular way to create a unit without losing yard space, but there are additional costs associated with these units that, need, that you need to be prepared for. Finally, please note the square footage price of construction goes down as the size of a unit goes up. This is because of the intrinsic costs of mobilizing a construction team. You only add time and materials when the building gets larger. So building an 800 square foot or more, so building 800 square feet or more could actually lower the square footage price. Um, and when it is a conversion, interior, oh, it's the next slide, please, I'm sorry. There we go. Um, interior conversions are more ec uh, economical because they save on material costs for exterior walls and sometimes interior finishes, such as drywall, trim, and flooring. But again, integrating with the existing structure can also add costs to the design and construction process. In this case, we have included um, a rough estimate for a 400 square foot unit, the size of a typical two car garage. Converting existing finished living space, in other words, simply repurposing an area of your home that may already include a bathroom and a separate entrance, so the unit functions independently, is the easiest and least expensive way to create an ADU or junior unit on your property, perhaps even less than what is being estimated here. But again, the cost can vary greatly based on the size, complexity, and condition of your home. Next slide. There are many things to consider when building an ADU, but we wanted to cover some key considerations that often come up and many people have questions about, starting with accessory structures that you've been dreaming about converting to an ADU. Uh, your ability to do so often hinges on whether the building was originally permitted. If your building was, was not permitted, it will need to be brought up to the current building code, including complying with the four foot side and rear setback allowed for ADUs. And if the structure does sit within the setback, it is often more economical and frankly freeing to demolish the building and build a new structure that best suits your needs. 
If your building is permitted, however, you are allowed to convert it into an ADU if it is, even if it is within the four foot setback. It's called legal non-conforming. You're even allowed to demolish the building completely and rebuild it in the same spot, but um, you are not allowed to increase the size or height except for adding an additional 300, let me try that again, adding an additional 150 square feet for access. To research building permits, you can contact the records room, which you can find on the planning department's website. And I will drop a link in the chat as well as, uh, as, I move, as we move towards the end of this presentation. Protecting the coastal zone is obviously necessary in Santa Cruz, but may add some additional requirements and costs depending. In some areas, an additional parking space is needed when an ADU is new construction and replacement parking may be required when an existing when existing parking is demolished or converted for the construction of an ADU. The good news is that parking can be added in any configuration on the property. For a two, three, or four bedroom home, three parking spaces are required. So providing for a fourth car in the driveway is often not a problem. If you're in a coastal exclusion area, you do not need a coastal um, development permit. However, if your home is in a appeals jurisdiction, a coastal permit is needed so that the Coastal Commission can decide if an appeal is appropriate to protect coastal resources, views, or habitat. In either case, there is still only one application that is processed through the permitting department and no public hearing is required. Fire severity zones have been established in state responsibility areas governed by the state fire marshal. If your home is in a high or very high fire severity zone, you will need to conform to the 30 foot setbacks from all property lines. This is one of the many things you can research on the county's GIS internet interactive mapping system that provides an unbelievable wealth of information. Um, we've not seen a tool nearly this comprehensive in any other jurist that we've worked in, any other jurisdiction that we've worked with in. And we encourage you to start your research there. Okay, so this is the system that Rachel is speaking to. It's quite uh, in depth with the information that's contained on it. And if you're one of those people who likes to uh, do research and likes to know what's going on with their property, this is really an incredible tool. This site contains a tremendous wealth of information that pertains to your specific property. And it's a tool that we utilize regularly uh, to help us flag information that uh, is important to better understand as it relates to factors that may drive overall feasibility. So just, to, just very briefly, once you have accepted the terms when you join the site, you'll start by clicking on either an APN or your address if you don't know your APN number and entering that information in this box and pushing search. You'll also see on the left-hand side that there's a legend. And each of these areas, when you click on it, drops down a wealth of information that pertains to that particular area. And that will help you start to see how that information really influences or affects your property. And as far as some of the most common layers that we like to look at, I just wanted to share that we tend to look at the biotic and water resources, hazard and geophysical, zoning, land use and utilities. There are other pieces of information that can also be very helpful, but I just wanted to highlight a little bit of what we like to look at when we're exploring information about each of your properties. Once you've entered your property address, you'll see a bird's eye view of your property. And you can start reviewing information by clicking on this toolbar down at the bottom of the screen. And in this particular example, I've highlighted land use. And by looking at land use, I can determine what zone you're located in, as well as some other information that may be of interest to your site. 
You can also, when you're in this view, go back to that legends page and you can click on one of the areas that you want to learn more about. So in this example, I've clicked on hazards and geophysical. And just for the screenshot, there's actually more information contained in this, this category than is visible. You can start to click on different categories to see how it pertains to your particular property. And then finally, this is an example that I've clicked on where I've clicked on parcel information. And the thing that I find interesting by clicking on parcel information is you can look up if there's any permit data on your property or planning data on your property. And by clicking on this link, it will pull that information up. Now, sometimes permit or planning information will not appear as the system may only go back a certain number of years, but it's still a really interesting thing to explore when you're looking for information on your property. Now, one of the things I've experienced and I wanna make sure I share with you is there is a lot of information on here that may be confusing as there is terminology that you may not be familiar with. And so as you're clicking through different sections, you will come across this circle with an I in it. And when you click on that, um, there is additional information and definitions pertaining to the options that may help. But in general, we wanted to make sure you knew that this information exists, and we wanna make sure you also knew how to access it. And I will plan to place this link in the chat so that you can have it at your fingertips before the presentation ends this evening. And that after you, brings, Rachel. Yeah, that brings us to septic systems, um, which is which we'll cover in this next section, um, because your ability to create an ADU or a junior unit, the reason we're all here this evening, entirely depends on whether the system is prepared to handle the additional waste. And the only way to determine that is to embark on a journey to learn more about your septic system than you probably ever wanted to know. And again, it must be understood and a plan must be put in place to, um, to expand it before you can take any action on creating an ADU or a junior ADU. We have broken this section into basic steps and we'll dig in deeper. So before you can build an ADU, you must find out the, the capacity of your existing septic system, hire a county approved qualified professional, have the system evaluated, design and upgrade a replace, design an upgrade or replacement system, apply for an environmental health permit and get approved, and then, and only then, should you begin designing your ADU. We want to underscore this because, is, because it is very common for people to go through the process of designing the ADU of their dreams, just to find out later that the work needed to upgrade the septic system is prohibitive because of cost or site constraints. If we do nothing else this evening, we would like to save you the cost of designing an ADU that might never be built. So let's take a closer look at requirements, costs, and timeline. We are gonna start with the players. Um, Environmental Health Services is commissioned with overseeing the requirements instituted by the Central Coast Regional Quality Control Board. Their mission is to protect and restore the region's public water basin to ensure the public's health and safety. I want to take this opportunity to thank Heather Reynolds, who has joined us here this evening for her help in putting this presentation together. We are very lucky to have her as a resource, helping to navigate the process and codes for septic requirements. It is a tremendous responsibility and task to oversee the safe operations of the 28,000 septic systems in the county, the greatest concentration of septic systems in California, by the way. Environmental health sees the good, the bad, and the ugly in the collective result of discharge from these systems and is overseeing corrections to ensure that Santa Cruz can build new homes and thrive long into the future. 
The local area management plan, the uh, LAMP as they call it, is the governing document that can be um, that can be looked up online if you wish to learn more about the rules around septic after this presentation. But I want to warn you, it's um, it's a very thick document. <laughs> so, uh, next slide, please. Standard versus non-standard systems. Your system will only have a designation if it was permitted starting in 1993. If your system has had an evaluation or been up, up or has been repaired, updated, or replaced in that time, then environmental health should have a record on it. Standard systems are conventional systems that will have a tank leach field and given the new code, a future expansion area equal in size to the existing leach field. They must meet the groundwater separation requirements and the size of these systems is determined by the total number of bedrooms and soil type. Non-standard systems either use enhanced technology or do not meet the requirements of a standard conventional system but function adequately for the existing usage. So what does it mean if you have a non-standard system? Parcels with systems that do not meet current code whether standard or non-standard, frankly, are not eligible to build an ADU, but may do a one-time addition of up to 500 square feet with no, with no additional bedrooms. Parcels with enhanced technology systems may be eligible to build an ADU with an upgrade to account for the additional waste. And properties with non-standard systems may be able to upgrade it to include an enhanced technology technology system to allow for an ADU. In all cases, a site evaluation is needed to determine if the system can be upgraded to allow for a new unit. Enhanced technology systems. Here are some of the situations in which enhanced technology systems, also called advanced or enhanced treatment systems, can help. They can sometimes mitigate a site that has limited availability, available area for a leach field. They can also mitigate other site condi conditions such as high groundwater, nitrate concerns, seepage tanks, and fast percolating soil. And they may allow for a 50 foot setback rather than a 100 foot setback when building near wells, springs, and waterways. In all cases, um, an enhanced, treat, enhanced treatment provides, an exp provides for an expansion of the system to allow for the development of an ADU. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so when it comes to septic, size matters. Larger properties may be able to install a second septic system to allow for an ADU rather than upgrading the existing system to accommodate more waste while smaller lots will need to upgrade the existing system to account for both, the, for, for both units waste, including space for the future expansion field. It, it is important to know what you have. Um, if there is an existing septic permit, you can find out what size structure this, the system was permitted for. It may be sized for the existing structure. It may be sized for greater capacity while other systems may be undersized because of additional building on the property. And some systems won't have a permit on file at all, particularly if they were created before 1993. So, an so a site evaluation will be needed to determine the type and size of system you have in order to, to determine the type and size of system you need to allow for the development of an ADU. Environmental health documents is your starting point to know what permit, what the permit status is of your current system. You can also find out if you have had an evaluation done here. You can start by going to the environmental health website and looking up your property to see if your system has a permit. And um, you will need the accessor's parcel number for this, the, AP, the APN, to search. Um, it can also be that can also be found on the GIS mapping system under parcel under the parcel information tab that we showed you earlier. 
um, I will I will drop this link in the chat later. Um, or you can just take a screenshot um, and we will also make this recording available if um, you wish to follow up as Jennifer was pointing out earlier. Um, you can request information on your septic system by following the link highlighted here and the online instructions. All right, so next, um, is your septic system, if your septic system is permitted, the permit will tell you the size structure your system was permitted for, Look at the number of structures, bedrooms, and the square footage. If the system is sized for a larger structure, you may be able to build an ADU without having to upgrade. If it was sized for the existing structure, upgrade standards apply when adding an ADU or a junior unit. And if the system is permitted for a smaller structure, it will have to be upgraded to support the larger structure as well as the ADU. Again, a site evaluation will determine, based on what you have, the type and size of system you need to build an ADU. If your system does not have a permit, however, a site evaluation must be done. The system will need to be repaired, and the system will need to be repaired and or upgraded to meet the current standards for new de development when building an ADU. It is important to note that if your system is functional and you choose not to build an ADU, no work must be done to repair or upgrade the system. So you're not obligated to do the work if you do not move forward with the project. However, if your system is actively failing, you will have to repair and possibly upgrade it. We also wanna make you aware that code compliance for unpermitted development done after the system was installed can trigger a repair or upgrade if the system is not sized correctly. And if you are one of the people who can install a new separate system for the ADU because your lot is big enough, please be aware that the main house system must also be evaluated and be functioning properly. Finally, if you decide to go forward with a site evaluation, please know that it doesn't expire as long as the primary and future expansion fields remain in the same place. So you have time to plan before beginning your project. Next slide, please. Some other considerations that we wanted to make you aware of. Um, properties in the 100-year flood zone cannot add bedrooms or ADUs. Properties near wells, creeks, and other um, waterways require a 100-foot setback, but again, enhanced technology systems can be used to reduce that, set, that, that setback, possibly in half. And properties in the septic nitrate concern area may require an enhanced treatment system. These are all site conditions you can research using the GIS interactive mapping system. So again, we really encourage you to get in there and start poking around. Hiring a county approved qualified professional. I will drop a link to the list of qualified professionals in the chat at the end. Um, your qualified professional will check if your system meets the minimum capacity and requirements for an ADU and they will confirm that, is, that it is functioning properly. They will check if the dispersal field is correctly sized and if it is function, functioning properly and if there is enough room for a future expansion field. They will check if the proposed system for the ADU will meet the current setback requirements. And finally, if additional testing is needed. It is your qualified professional who applies for the environmental health site evaluation and the county staff will be present to witness the testing. Site evaluation tests for a number of constraints, including soil percolation rate, so soil profile, and groundwater separation. A site evaluation will provide valuable information in determining the type of upgrade needed when designing the new system, and it will be utilized when applying for the septic permit. Next slide, please. Yeah. Um, once the septic design is completed, you can apply for a septic permit. A septic permit is required for all upgrades and modifications to the system. 
Once the design is accepted, you will receive a building clearance that will allow you to apply for the ADU building permit. This is when you can safely begin designing your ADU. Once your building permit for the ADU is approved, you can begin work on upgrading or replacing the existing septic system, but not before the ADU permit is approved. Next slide, please. So what will the new system cost? There are three kinds of costs associated with these systems. There are application and permit costs, evaluation and design costs, and the cost of installing the new system. Just know that there are com complex factors that influence these prices, so we can only offer you a range. Some of you will go through the process of having your site evaluated and find out that the project is not feasible, while others might go all the way through, including design and installation. So we wanted to offer you estimate, uh, estimated pricing in all cases. Environmental health service fees for the site evaluation are between six and $1,300, while the septic system permit itself can run between 3,500 and 4,300. Um, in total, environmental health service fees can cost between four and $6,000, generally speaking. While the cost of designing system varies greatly depending on site and system conditions, enhanced, enhanced, <clears throat> enhanced technology systems cost more due to their complexity, which again can vary considerably. This is also reflected in the cost of purchasing and installing these systems. Standard septic systems, if you can accommodate them, will be less expensive. If you, you, uh, you will find a low high estimate, all in costs at the bottom of this slide. And as you can see, we left it somewhat open-ended because of the many factors with system design and site consideration that impact pricing. The timeline. Uh, we think it's important to share this estimated timeline so you can better understand the investment in time that is required when thinking about a potential project of this size. Conservatively speaking, the time to evaluate, design, and approve a new septic system, and then subsequently the timeline for designing, permitting, and constructing an ADU can be three years. Be aware that the timing is contingent on the availability of busy professionals in a very active construction industry. Also, please note that the timeline for permitting can fluctuate seasonally, as some times of the year see far more applications flood in than others. And lastly, construction timelines can vary greatly depending on the weather. We wanna make sure that you have a realistic expectation of how long it will take to get from concept to completion of your ADU. So just wanted to lay it out for you. And finally, the cost of it all. To sum it up, the cost of building an ADU added to the cost of upgrading your septic system equals the overall price of your ADU project, in this case, $500,000. With septic included on, the pro on a project of this size, sorry, let me try that again. With septic included on a project of this size, it gets more challenging and prohibitive, particularly in this higher interest rate environment. So I'll ask where in the community can you buy a home, in this case of approximately 500 square feet, a small one bedroom, for half a million dollars? Perhaps there are other better opportunities out there, but in many of the beautiful areas of Santa Cruz, you may be able to justify this solid investment in your land, depending on your goals, and perhaps create an opportunity to house family or friends or rent to others to generate additional income. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rachel. That was a lot of really technical information, but really important information for us to share this evening. 
So what are the next steps? So as we've discussed, in order to truly know if an ADU or a junior ADU is feasible on your property, an environmental site evaluation must be conducted. Without this critical information, the Hello ADU team will not be able to determine what is feasible on your property. The county's program is a three-year pilot program, and therefore property owners who seek to benefit from the project management services of this program must have a site evaluation that is completed in order for us to move, in order to move forward with the ADU project management component. If you have not completed a site evaluation and you want to determine if an ADU or a JDU is feasible, you'll need to start the process that we've shared with you this evening. And for those of you who do have a site evaluation completed on your property and are interested in moving forward with the application process, a lottery will be conducted for those with evaluations who are ready to move forward and will reach out to those applicants next week. We know that this is a lot of information to take in and we recognize that the cost and the time commitment to have your septic systems evaluated may be more than you're prepared to take on right now. Our approach has always been to provide homeowners with information and education upfront. Um, you know, to, it's, it's incredibly important that no one goes through the process of hiring an architect to start designing the new ADU just to learn down the road that they'll need to start the process of evaluating their septic system before knowing if an ADU or JDU is even possible. We are grateful for all of you taking the time to join us this evening. And we really hope that this information helps you think through your next steps in a more informed way. And with that, I wanna remind you that we are recording this information and that we are happy to share this recording with any of you, it, should you like. And if so, please reach out to us by email. We'll also be downloading the questions that have been proposed by participants throughout the presentation. And we'll follow up shortly with responses to these questions by email. And with that, I would like to thank you again and have a wonderful night. Thank you for your time and your attention this evening.